you start off with assembly of your big timber patio heater, you'll want to remove all items from the box. It is a very good idea to wear a pair of gloves because there are some sharp edges that you may encounter. Next step is to make sure you remove all vinyl from every part of the stove that has a gray finish with blue lettering that will not be able to be removed later. Flip your stove upside down to make the next step of attaching your base go much smoother. You'll make sure to have your wheel kit facing the rear underneath the hopper. Four stainless steel glide feet will thread into place at all four corners. Attach the wheel kit bracket so the angled portion is angled up towards the hopper. This will keep the wheels off the ground while your stove is resting flat on the ground. Go ahead and flip your stove upright for the remaining steps. Next you'll be installing the firebox bottom plate. Insert through the ash pan slot and you'll angle it up to get past the rivets so that you can align the PEMS with the holes on all four sides. Remove the cellophane wrapping from your fire pot. When you install the fire pot, you're going to want to make sure that the fire pot slide grate, the nut on that is facing the rear of the stove. You may have to angle it to get it to drop into place. Next, you'll thread the pull rod handle into that nut on the bottom side of the fire pot from the rear.
Next, attach the door mounting bracket to the stove body, making sure that the threaded portion is in the top position. Attaching the door, start by just hand threading the screws into place and then later tighten with a screwdriver. Next, we're going to thread the spring handle onto the door latch. This can be done by firmly grasping the spring handle and rotating the spring handle counterclockwise. Insert your stovepipe collar from the bottom side up, aligning all four tabs with the corresponding holes. When attaching the stove top to the stove body, attach the screws by hand first, leaving a little room for adjustment as you work your way around. Then go back and lightly torque into place. Place the shutoff key loop around the handle before attaching to the hopper. Place your heat shield between the hopper and the stove body. There are two notches that you'll drop the tabs into place to keep the heat shield set. Bend your three tabs on the spark arrestor outward to a 90 degree angle so that they will meet up flush with the top reflector.
When connecting the seam of your stove pipe together, make sure to find a solid flat surface because you may have to use some downward pressure to get the seam to snap together. Start at one end, working your way up. Have the seam of both the stove pipe and the spark arrestor facing away from you when attaching to the stove body and have the crimp section of stove pipe facing upward so it can nest inside the spark arrestor. For a more permanent attachment, you can use the included self-tapping screws to attach your stove pipe to your stove collar. This will keep the stove pipe from leaning or blowing off if you're in a windy location. This next step is one that we cannot recommend enough. Before you make your initial burn of your stove, make sure to wipe it down with the included stainless steel cleaning wipes covering all surfaces. Any dirt or fingerprints are gonna show up as a permanent patina on the stove body and stove pipe if present during your initial burn. Now that you've done the hard part, fill up your hopper and get ready to light your stove. We recommend using a gel style fire starter that will remain on the top of the pellets and not soak in. This helps prevent the pellets from swelling up and smoking. Thank you for joining the Timber Stoves family. If you have any questions, reach out to us directly or you can find us on woodpelletproducts.com.